about Jesus Christ, his origin, life, and teaching. This is written by Bishop Constantine. This work, in the form of questionnaires, is a work of Archimandrite High Priest Father Procopius, Papa Theodoro, with the title Agiographic Studies. He mentions the questions from the life of our Lord, almost only the pages of the Holy Bible. In other words, the Bible gives us references of our Lord Jesus Christ, his origin, life, and teaching. And the work is a deposit in the magazine uh, of 1955, The Apostolic Ministry of the Church of the Greek Orthodox Church. We were intrigued by the questions of this work, and we interpre interpreted the mentioned passages only, not only for personal benefit, but also for our brothers in Christ. And the interpretation of the text was carried out by the New Testament. And these are, of course, grammatical and syntactical errors for these. We ask for your forgiveness. They are addressed, as mentioned in the introduction, mainly to those who have put their hands on to the plow to cultivate the field that is our souls. May the cultivated land yield many spiritual fruits for the glory of the Lord in our salvation. The prerequisite. Does Christ have a principle of existence? No, because he is eternal, the creator, identical with the Father and the Holy Spirit and the Holy Trinity. Christ existed at the beginning of creation, according to John 1, 2. And he existed before all, and from it the buildings are held together and maintaining the existence of others and are governed, Colosseans 1, 17. I tell you the truth, before Abraham was born 2,000 years ago, I existed eternally and before the ages, according to John 45, 58. Christ was yesterday, he is today, and he will be the same throughout the ages, Hebrew 1, 8. May there be grace and peace to you from God the Father, who is truly and of himself existing and who has always existed and will always exist in the future, and from the rich spiritual gifts of the Holy Spirit, who is before the throne of God, ready to be sent to enlighten and sanctify people. I affirm this, who am the Alpha and the Omega, the principle that created everything, and the end to which everything will end in the highest purpose is God the Almighty. Revelations 4, 4, 8. Two, so question two. Where, where, where was Christ before he was born in Bethlehem? He was inseparable from God and was closest to him because it is the perfect word of God the Father, John 1.1. 1, 1. I have always been for God his permanent joy and blessedness. During creation I enjoy the joy and delight of his God the Father face and Christ rejoiced seeing the sons of men of the earth. Proverbs 3, um, H of 30.31 the son of, uh, who was born alone from the essence of God the Father and is always inseparable from him, Christ explained to us the, and introduced us to God the Father. John 1.18 At the beginning of creation, there was the Son of God who was born from the Father as an infinite and living word from the infinite and all-wise mind of God. John 1.1 1, 1. Jesus Christ has the same essence and nature as God the Father, but he is also an infallible image of God the Father. Christ was before creation a br brilliant radiance of the glorious nature of God the Father. Philippians 2.6 He is light from light and co-principal with God the Father. He surrounds and governs everything with his almighty decree. Hebrews 1.3 in the conversation of the Lord with Philip, Philip says to him, Lord, show us by an apocalyptic apparition the glory and holiness of the Father. The Lord answered him, I have been with you so long, and you have yet not known me, who am, who, uh, who am I according to the divine nature? He who sent me and appreciated the truth of my teaching and the holiness of my life and the miraculous action has also seen the Father. He who has seen me has seen the Father. 
because I am his natural son, and with human nature his glory and holiness shine. John 9. And what about heaven? Where is it this mention that Christ was in heaven? And yet from me you will learn the heavenly mystery, says Christ, for no one of men has ascended to heaven to know the heavenly things and to teach you about them except me, who came down from heaven and became the Son of Man by the Incarnation, who is now on earth, and he continues as God, who is to be omnipresent. John 3.13 Through his ascension he will return to heaven. When he leaves your eyes, you will not see him. In uh, John through the ascension, David spoke prophetically to him. The Messiah, will, while, he is, while he is his descendant as a man, but at the same time he is also God, sit at my right hand, says God the Father, and that even as a man, man you may enjoy divine and unique honors. Acts 2.34 Where is Jesus? He comes and descends from heaven. He is superior to all for this and speaks of the heavenly mysteries, John 3.31. And he testifies to these things which he heard from God the Father, John 3.32. The words of Jesus possess the complete and absolute divine revelation and teach precisely the teaching of God the Father, John 3.34. He came down from heaven and imparts immortal life to all men. He was the bo in the bosom of the Father, and through his incarnation he came to the world as man, and through his ascension he ascended into the heavens. Hebrews 4, 9-10 On humanization, the prophet Baruch, who prophesies the incarnation of the pre-existing Word of God, God the Word, this is our God, God, no one else is like him. He knew the whole way of wisdom and gave it to Jacob, his servant and his beloved Israel. After that he appeared on earth and after humans he returned. Saint John Chrysostom considers this prophecy important because it speaks very clearly about the incarnation of the Word of God, Jesus Christ. You saw how everything in general was revealed in an indirect way in short phrases and that God being God became a man and mingled with men and that even the Old Testament he himself legislated St. Chrysostom concerning um, uh, the nature of God. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost being one. As I'm reading this, I want to refer to Deuteronomy, the Shema Israel. Shema Israel, uh, Yehovah Eloheinu, Yehovah Elchod, meaning God, uh, listen Israel, God is um, uh, Yehovah, and God is one. Now, going back to the uh, article, St. John Chrysostom considered this prophecy important because it speaks very clearly about the incarnation of the Word. You saw how everything in general was revealed in an indirect way, in short phrases, and that God being God became a man and mingled with men, and that even the Old Testament he himself legislated. Where does it say that Christ in John, the evangelist took flesh, uh, became that is incarnated, and became a man. The word became man in time, making a scene like a holy temple, human nature, and stayed with us. John 1.14 We saw the surpassing glory manifested by his miracles and his teaching, the only natural son. And where does it say that he became a man? Empty shirk himself before the greatness of his divinity and took the form of a servant, similar to us. In fact, he was not only a man, but also God at the same time, and he humbled himself by becoming a subject to death on the cross, which is humiliating and painful. Philips, Philippians 2, 7-8 He was revealed as an eternal treasure, and the church was handed over to him, and he is a true Messiah through the Holy Spirit and works miracles through him. He is the God-man Lord whom the world believed and was taken up in glory. 1 Timothy 3.16 He heard what he said from God the Father, John 3.32 He possesses the full and absolute revelation and teaches exactly the teaching of God the Father, John 3.34 How did Jesus Christ become a man? 
The Archangel Gabriel appeared to the Virgin Mary and told her that she would give birth to a son. The Virgin Mary said to him, How can I become a mother since I do not know man? In other words, she had no con physical contact with man, with, you know, uh, intercourse. Now, Archangel Gabriel answered her, The Holy Spirit will cleanse you from original sin. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. It will sanctify you. The holy infant who will be born in a supernatural way will be recognized as the Son of God. Luke 1, 34-35 Genealogy of Jesus Christ The genealogical tree of Christ is mentioned in the Gospel according to Matthew Abraham, who was a descendant of David, begat Isaac, Isaac begat Jacob, Jacob and his brothers from where Christ was born, Matthew 1, 16. According to Luke, Christ was about 30 years old when his work began, and he was, as the Jews believed, the son of Joseph, who was the son of Eli, Luke 3, 23. Why is Matthew descended from Abraham, Luke from Adam? Matthew writes for the Jews, Luke for the Gentiles. Where is Christ from 12 to 30 years old? Were not his brothers with us? Matthew 13, 55. So he was known to his compatriots. He lived and worked in Nazareth. The teaching was of God the Father, John 16. Beginning being uh, subservient to Joseph and his mother, Luke 2.51. Jesus was a carpenter, Mark 3.6. And prophecies on Jesus Christ. He will be born in Bethlehem. Micah of the Old Testament, Micah 5.2, the 8th century BC said, and you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, the little one, so that you are among the thousands of Judah, from you will come forth a man to be a, rab a rabbi in Israel, whose issues are from the beginning, from days and ages. A child was born, a son was given. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, and the power will be in his likeness, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty, Good Father, Mighty God, Father of Ages to Come, Prince of Peace. The King will come sitting on a horse. Zechariah 9.9, 9, not a horse, but a donkey. Uh, Zechariah 9.9, 9, Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Rejoice, daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your King is coming on you. He is righteous and saving, gentle and sick, sitting on a, a donkey and on the foul of a donkey. The Messiah will die for our sins. Jesus Christ, that is. Messiah 50, Isaiah 52, 12. Behold, my servant will prosper. He will be exalted and glorified and ascended high. For this reason, I will give him a portion after the great and the mighty. He will divide the spoil because he gave his soul to death. And after the lawless, he was reckoned and he bore the sins of many and will die and will intercede for the lawless. They will give him gall and vinegar to drink. Psalm 69, 21. And they gave me gall for food, and for my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Prophecy, 8th century BC. He will come from the tribe of Judah. Genesis 49, 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh comes to you, that is the Messiah, and to him shall be the obedience of the people. Prophecy, 15th century BC. He will be betrayed by his friends. Psalm 41, 9. And this man, after whom I lived peacefully, in whom I hoped, who ate my bread, raised his heel against me. He will be born of a virgin. Prophecy, 10th century BC. Isaiah 7, 14. Because of this, Lord, this Lord will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and he will call his name Emmanuel. Prophecy, 8th century BC. They will pierce his hands and feet. Psalm 22, 16. For dogs have surrounded me. A company of wicked men has surrounded me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. Prophecy, 10th century BC, about the Virgin Mary. The closed gate. Ezekiel 44.2, the burning bush, Exodus 3.1-2, Jacob's ladder, Genesis 28.12, the basket of Gideon, Judges 6.37, bright clouds, Exodus 
1321. The ancient Greeks about the coming of Christ, from what emerges from a comparative study of the traditions of various people of the world, all of humanity before Christ awaited the coming of a savior who would redeem humanity from death. The ancient world prophesied the joyful event verified and cross-referenced in various ways. The prophets before Christ are scattered among the peoples, immediately below some of those that are witnessed in surviving ancient Greek manuscripts and works. Plato had written in his book, Law and Inventions, the just without wrongdoing will be scourged, he will give, and finally he will be crucified in Plato's state, BV 362. Solon writes, whenever in divided humanity, the incorporeal deity will take flesh, this God will bring freedom from passions, this incorporeal God will be hanged by an unknown people and all the passions will be willingly endured. In the Holy Land, there are also manuscripts that save prophecies of Sibyl about the coming of Christ, the oracle that is. For example, in a manuscript with the name Memorial to the Holy Apostle Philip, which is kept in the Holy Monastery of Dohiario in Greece, the following is mentioned. After a long time, someone will reach this divided earth and be born with undefiled flesh, with inexhaustible limits as deity, he will redeem man from the corruption of incurable passions, and an unbelievable, unbelieving people will envy him, and he will be hanged high as condemned to death, and he will bear all this with meekness. The, the Oracle of Delphi prophesied in the work of Plato's Phaedrus of the immortal God, the great son, the, uh, uh, who will be openly praised, and to whom the supreme parent handed over the throne to be received by him who was not born as a two-faced being because of the flesh, appeared and bathed in the currents of the Jordan River, which he leads by dragging the waves with sparkling feet. In the work Prometheus Bound by Aeschylus, Prometheus being imprisoned in the Caucasus, predicts that his Redeemer will be born of the Virgin to a God, that is, he will be the Son of God and the Son of a Virgin, this God-man will catalyze the power of all the old gods and will destroy them and their power. About the names of Jesus Christ. Some names in the Holy Bible reveal his identity and his special characteristics. The multitude of names and interjections show the complete inability to express the whole mystery of Christ and that no title can fully cover it. A. Emmanuel, which means God is with us. B. Jesus, the name Jesus was given to the Virgin Mary by the Archangel Gabriel and expresses salvation, which means Yahweh saves, according to St. Clement of Alexandria. C. Christ the Messiah. Christ also means Messiah, the preeminent Christian Christ. The name Jesus honorably remains inseparable from the name Jesus. The name Christ indicates his two natures, God-man. D. Lord fully expresses the mystery of Christ. Elizabeth was the first to name Jesus Lord. The name Lord manifests itself mainly in the royal office. E, the son of man. It usually means a person. From the prophet Daniel, the term son of man, an attribute, a uniquely a unique characteristics of the Messiah, such as pre-existence, the descent from the heavens, mainly because the Lord himself preferred. Now, F, the Son of God, it was a royal and messianic title. The main purpose of writing the gospel according to John is for the readers to believe that Christ is the Son of God. G, the Son of David, according to the Jewish tradition, the Messiah will come from the generation of David. H, Savior, Angelon, the angel of God, was the first to recognize him as a savior. With his miracles, I call, they gave me, uh, I call the savior uh, because he saves the sick from their diseases and raises the dead. Salvation is more important than the burden of sin. Undertakes the mission of the child or the save, save, servant. I, the uh, son of God, which is answered by the meaning of child or servant, 
While he is a teacher, he treats his disciples as deacons, servants for your grace from your brothers. J, the prophet. Moses prophesies about the Lord. The Lord God will raise up for you a prophet like me, Messiah. Deuteronomy 2, 15. A great prophet will arise among us, according to Luke. Uh, K, a rabbi or teacher. The Lord accepted to be called rabbi teacher because he is the main and only teacher, uh, as uh, written in Matthew. L, the, the uh, one who is... Um, uh, an intermediary for us, praying for us, one God, one mediator of God and men, Christ Jesus. A Timothy, 1 Timothy 2, 5 to 6. M, the reason that it is the word of God. The son is called the word. He is born anodinally like the word from the mind, but also for the unity with the father and a proclamation. Because he himself said, all that I have heard from the Father I have declared to you. John 10, 15. N, the Lamb of God. John the Baptist pointed out the Messiah to the crowds, characterizing him as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John 1, 29. The Lamb of God, like a sheep led to the slaughter like a dumb lamb. Yes, the saint, he casts out the unclean spirits and they called him Jesus, the Son of God, Holy One of God, Matthew 1, 28. P, the righteous, Acts uh, G, 52. Q, the leader. So he did not take life from another. He himself is the author of life, having life from himself. H, the Nazarene. Jesus of Nazareth, his place is his place of origin. Where was it, where was it written on the inscription of the cross? Jesus Nazareth, Vasilia Iudeon, Jesus Nazareth, King of the Jews. S, the bridegroom. First John, the forerunner, called the Lord bridegroom and himself the bridegroom's friend. John 3.29. K, um, he that he is coming, the one who is coming, the one that is and is coming, the descriptive name, the one who is and the one who is to come is a development of the divine name Yahweh, which denotes God who exists eternally. The judge, he's called the judge of the living and the dead. And uh, the only begotten and firstborn, he was born alone and one way, alone in one way. C, uh, the Lord of the, or the King of Glory, he is called the King of Glory because he receives glory from all and because he has a true and permanent kingdom. And other denominations, the second Adam, the hope of Israel, the king of Israel, the waterman, uh, the light of the world, the beloved, God's chosen one, the east, that is the, uh, the light of the east, gift of life, resurrection and life, the true vine, the good shepherd, the pantocrator, meaning the, uh, the all, all, all holy, the a, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, King of kings and Lord of lords, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the faithful witness, the Holy One and the door. Christ has been proclaimed King and priest and God and Lord, an angel and man and commander in chief, and stone and child that is born. Way, stone, foundation, root, sheep, life, arms, garment, bank, house, Tenant, head, pure, despot. I am the way because you have come through me, and the truth because I am the truth, and the life because I have dominion over death. If I am the way, I will lead you. If I am the truth, do not lie. If I am the life, do not even, not even death will separate you from me. The main commandments of the gospel according to St. Nicodemus of um, the Holy uh, Mount Athos. Every Christian must love God. Every Christian must love his brother and his fellow man. Christians must not have disputes or feel grudges and hatred against other, their brothers. 
but even if they still misunderstand each other, they must quickly reconcile. Christians must not see with curiosity and lust. Christians must not swear, neither true nor false. Christians must not be vindictive, nor repay evil for evil. Christians must not at all go to courts for the resolution of their disputes, but if the need ever arises, let them prefer to appoint a person from the church as a judge in their disputes rather than uh, flee to secular courts. Christ must not criticize, Christians must not criticize. If Christians do not forgive the mistakes of their brothers, neither will God forgive their own mistakes. Christians must give alms, but also pray and fast, but not hypocritically. That is to be glorified and praised by people, but only for God. Christians must take care to acquire not earthly, but heavenly treasure. And the rich ought to weep and mourn for their riches rather than count on them. Christians must not care for earthly goods nor love the world and worldly things, but seek eternal and heavenly goods. They must not be proud, but be humble and love humbly, and must face with patience all sorrows that find them. And they must not surrender to worldly cares and material pleasures, nor live with negligence and spiritual laziness, but to always be spiritually alert and ready, waiting for the time of death and the judgment of God. And they must constantly repent from the depths of their souls, from the depths of their souls, and if Christians do not surpass the righteousness, the, the, the righteous of the Old Testament in good works, they will not enter the kingdom of heaven. And if they will sin, they will go to hell more heavily, heavily than the unbelievers. The source is from the voice of the fathers of the Holy Monastery of Paraclete. And uh, please leave your comments about this, and thank you for your support. Please support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support, and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.